more experienced people so let's assume you go into an industry you have spent uh, f- you know five you know five years ten years um, even i because i do career you know mentoring coaching you know as a as a regular basis you know i have a if you go to sm dojo there's a there's a link there somebody wants to get a career coaching is there anyway uh, is a paid link uh, the the one of the co- most common group which comes to me that they have spent five and seven years right and they are not progressing enough so basically they want to be supply chain managers directors whatever and they are not they are not progressing fast enough right uh, so they have actually uh, three problems three common problems right the, yeah, so the three common problems they have, you know, being a supply chain problem. First, uh, again, they have not, they have changed jobs too much, right? Because they are looking to grow and grow. Second problem they have is they have not become master in one area, whatever the area is. If you are in supply chain, stay in supply chain. If you are in procurement, stay in procurement. If you are in HR analytics, stay in HR analytics. And the third is they have not worked on their soft skills, right? They have not developed how to present a CV. They, they have not worked on how to uh, basically present to people, right? Hence, therefore, and uh, and many other issues because they don't know how to network at the same time as well, right? So, so, so this is the three common themes I have seen in, in mentoring them. So coming back to the people who are seven to eight years, middle part of the career, what they have to do. So what I've seen, there are four common problems, right? I used to have a triangle, but now with the COVID and stuff, I'll say it's a, a square. So you, so if you are want to boost your career, you need to acquire four four things. First, you need to acquire your technical knowledge. So if you work in HR, marketing, supply chain, IT, manufacturing, whatever, your technical knowledge is a hygiene factor. So if you work in HR, you need to know how to build the organization structure, you know, how to do create engagement, you know, how to basically set the goals of the team, etc, etc. Then the second most important part you need to understand is the soft skills. Soft skills, I mean, communication is very important, right? Both one to one through the use of emails, whatever the electronic communication channels are, right? You need to be a very good communicator, crisp and sharp. If you're gonna talk too much, people will not understand. Be, be, be bright, be brief, be gone. The third is a leadership skill. So what I mean by leadership skills, you have to be a genuine leader. You have to be creative, you have to lead by example, right? You have to be visionary, whatever, how level you work, you need to have a vision where you want to go, right? And the fourth, I would say, is the knowledge of technology, right? So right now, knowledge of technology is important, right? Everybody is using those buzzwords like blockchain. You know, I was doing a project recently and somebody come back to me. Oh, why can't you use the blockchain? I said, guys, we do not have a system to go online right now to interface with customers. Do not throw the buzzwords in. Blockchain, it there is not even a proper technology available right now. Government, people spend a lot of money because people hear those those words, right? But they don't know how to use it. Nothing wrong is using the buzz words, but it has to be used in the in the right context. So people are worried right now. I would say four. If you have time, I think you have the skills you have presented is is pretty pretty nice. So I'll say spend this. So. Your technical competence is fine, it's giving, you need to know that. So if you don't have technical skills, you should not be turning up for a job anyway, right? Focus on improving your soft skills and your pre- which includes the presentation skills because presentation skills is essentially gonna make or break because if you want good jobs, you are meeting very important people and those important people do not have time, right? Let me tell you a, a, a fact and you're a, you're a HR prof- professional and, and your audience is HR professionals, right? And, and I have a sometime deba- debate with them as well. As a hiring manager, most people, as soon as, uh, for example, if I'm going for, an, or if I'm interviewing somebody and people are coming to interview, you know, as, as an interviewee, and as soon as they enter the door, they walk in, they shake my hand and they sit down, they smile, not smile, right? Within that seven seconds, I have made up my mind, I'm going to hire this person or not, within these seven seconds. You, you would argue that's unfortunate, that's not true. But that's essentially the fact of life because the world is built, built around perception, unfortunately.